Hi guys and welcome back. This is part 8 of my C++ for game development series and in this part we'll be talking about structs. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions make sure you guys do join my discord server link to that is in the description. Also if you guys do wish to support me link to my patron as well is down in the video description. So let's go ahead and imagine a situation where we need to create a car. So a car will have several properties. So I just created a multi-line comment here. So a car has several properties. So for example, a car will have a certain amount of top speed. And a car will also have several other characteristics such as the color. So each car will have a different color. And maybe the number of seats is also a characteristic of the car. So if you would observe, the top speed is going to be a number, a color is going to be, you know, uh, an RGB value or for in our case, let's just keep it as a string to simplify things and the number of seats is going to be an integer. So how do you actually combine these into one convenient package? That's where you use structs and some of you guys might also suggest that we use classes we'll take a look at how to use classes for the same example and why that would be better however for the sake of taking a basic example let's use struct so the way you create a structure is by using the keyword struct and you call it car for example so this is the name of our struct and you just open up your curly braces and terminate it with a semicolon now inside here, you can have how many other variables that you want. So for example, we have a top speed variable. So float top speed and let's have a color variable. So we'll use std string, std string color. And now let's also have, you know, the number of seats. So number of seats should be an integer. So int num seats. So we don't really need uh, a lot of uh, a lot of higher values so we'll use short int so we have these three variables so now let's say we wanted to refer to a car instead of creating separate variables for each car you can create one variable of type car so let's say you didn't have a struct over here you would have to do something like this so we'd have to do something like you know top speed one so let's say float top speed one or something like that or you can have like a float array so top speeds and let's say you create an array of size 10 so you can hold the top speeds of 10 cars and you would have to do the same for each of the other variables however now you don't need to do this you can use the struct car so you can just create a variable just like how you would create a variable of any other type. This is similar to how we created a variable for enumerated data types. So enums. So the way you do it is type in car. Let's say we call this car1. And the way you actually access these variables is using the member reference operator or the dot operator. So let's say we have car1 and let's say we have another car2 for good measure. The way you do it, the way you'd set the values for car1 and car2 is a little something like this. So car1 dot top speed equals, let's say for example, 300.5 float. So now the top speed of car1 is going to be 300.5. And we can also set the color of car1. So car1 dot color equals let's say for example red and car1 dot num, num seats equals let's say 4 let's say the car has 4 seats now we can go ahead and actually print this out so i'm using namespace std so see out so we can do car1 dot num seats let's just print it out as is so car1 dot top speed and let's just print car one dot color and let's just print car one dot num seats and let's go ahead and run this now as you can see we are going to be getting the values 300.5 red and 4 
So this is basically how you use structs. Now you can also create functions for structs. So for example, let's. Uh, this is not preferable though. Generally, when you have more number of functions, you would use classes and objects. But you can do it. So for example, let's say we create a function called set properties, or rather, we'll just use set uh, top speed and color. So what we can do is we can pass these as arguments. So let's pass the top speed. So float top speed and we'll do float color. Now what we can do is we can set top speed to be equal to the top speed which we passed. Now the way this works is the top speed which we are referring over here is going to refer to the top speed of car 1 in this case and if we use car 2 it's going to refer to the top speed of car 2. So for whichever uh, object we use the dot operator we would, we would be referring to that. So color equals color. Alright now what we can do is we can go ahead and do car 2 dot set top speed and color and let's say we make this 230 point seven let's say and what we can do is we can set the color to be equal to let's say white all right so this should be good whoops i called this one float so this is going to be std string or we can use a const std string reference now we can go ahead and run this also print it out So instead of car 1, we are going to have car 2. Alright. Now, you would notice that we have some junk value for number of seats. But for the remaining ones, this is absolutely what we actually set. Now, just another side note here. Let's say you wanted to initialize the values. You don't have to use the dot operator every time. You can actually use a constructor. So a constructor is basically a special function which is called when you initialize an object, when you instantiate a car. So for example, here we have instantiated two cars, car 1 and car 2. So you can go ahead and use that to initialize values inside it. Or you could even uh, write your own constructors. So the way you do it is by using the name of your struct itself and define a body for it something like this now what you can do is you can do top speed equals zero color equals let's say gray by default or let's just call it no color which doesn't make logical sense but anyways this is just for checking if it works and num seats equals zero now we should not be getting the junk value for number of seats. So as you can see we get 0 and we do not get the junk value. That's because if you do not actually use a constructor manually, it's going to call this default constructor. So if your constructor doesn't have arguments like it doesn't over here, this is called a default constructor and implicitly this is what's going to be called. So let's delete this part and let's see another way to initialize this. We'll look at other types of construct constructors as well. You can actually do car1 equals, open your curly braces and set each member in the same order as it is over here. So let's say we do 100 and let's say for example we do color as blue for example, blue and we can have 3 for the number of seats. Alright, now you can go ahead and do this. Just uh, remove this for now. Oops. Just remove this for now. Because if you do have a default constructor, it does as expect you to actually have a parameterized constructor for this to work. So if I go ahead and run this, this is going to work absolutely fine. However, if I paste back this constructor, as you see, you get a build error. So it's not able to 
uh, you know initialize the members so the way you would actually do it is by creating another constructor so we need three arguments so we'd have these two anyways so we'll copy this over so we'll just have an std string here and also we can have number of seats so we can have int num seats and now as you can see our error is gone we can go ahead and copy this over we'll change the case of this and num seats equals num seats so this should be good and we have an extra curly brace over here all right and now we should be able to run the game i mean run the window and as you can see we set our values as expected and there are other ways to call this constructor as well you can do car1 and in parentheses you could go ahead and set the values so for example 120 let's say green and let's say we go ahead and do 5 so this is another way to call the constructor and one more way to do it which is going to be used quite commonly is by using the explicit call method so you call it explicitly like this so you do car1 car car1 equals car and in the bracket it's as if you're calling the function equals whatever you have in the constructor so for example let's say we have 300 orange and let's say we have 3 so this is another way to call the constructor so this is how you would go about working with structs now you may notice a small problem here now the top speed color and number of seats are common for all sorts of vehicles right so let's say we have a struct called vehicle now there is no way that i can take these properties from vehicle and reuse them so this code is absolutely not reusable so let's say I create a bus i'll need to rewrite each of these variables so to get around that we would use a class so we'll talk about that and we'll talk about something known as inheritance which we are going to use in order to you know inherit properties so that we reduce repetition in our code 